<laughs> Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. Today we're taking a look at a selection of trivia for the best selling console of all time, the PS2. Let's be frank, the PlayStation 2 is perhaps one of the greatest consoles to ever grace the market. We're not trying to be biased by saying this, it's just clearly evident that gamers absolutely love the system, it was well priced, had a huge selection of titles, and it paved the way for the next big leap in gaming. While the competition was by no means lacking, the PS2 was just a full step further forward than anything else, and the games that resided on its architecture were so varied that there was easily something to please anyone. One of the biggest hits on the system is undoubtedly the sequel to Konami's tactical espionage action PS1 heavy hitter, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. The game made some changes to the cast seen in the first release, with Otacon taking on a more pivotal role when it comes to codec calls. During the opening segment of the game on the tanker, Snake must communicate with Otacon to save his game. Whilst doing so, Otacon will digress into fairly non sequitur proverbs, which while trying his best, he will often fail to recite properly. By continuing to save the game, Otacon's proverbs become more and more disjointed with each call. By listening to Otacon a total of 13 times, in the midst of another failed attempt to deliver poetic words of wisdom, a disembodied Mei Ling, who would save the game for Snake in the first Metal Gear Solid, will interject in the call through an audio-only transmission. She interrupts Otacon, attempting to correct him with a misplaced cheat sheet that she had made for him, but will scold him after finding out that he lost the sheet and just butchered the proverbs with his own interpretations instead. After this, she tells Otacon that the two have unfinished business and departs. This is the only time that Mailing makes an appearance in the entirety of the game. The PS2 had many great games that we want to talk about, but before we get into more trivia, we'd like to talk about this episode's sponsor, Raycon Earbuds. Raycon wireless Bluetooth earbuds are extremely comfortable to wear and have helped us ease ourselves back into a normal schedule as the world slowly regains some normality. This is in part thanks to the Raycons having a 32-hour battery life and several different size soft tips that can be swapped out for a perfect fit. They're also extremely sturdy and won't fall out during a jog. This makes listening to music while doing chores and running errands completely hassle-free. You could even listen to Digino Gaming while you're on the go. The Raycon company was co-founded by American rapper and actor Ray J, and Raycons even have Snoop Dogg's seal of approval. And they're guaranteed to have your seal of approval too, with a 45-day happiness guarantee. Raycons are about half the price of any other premium earbuds, and even better, you can get your own pair of Raycons for 15% less than their retail price by using our link in the description, or by going to buyraycon.com dykg. And now, back to the trivia. While it's considered by those who played it to be a great title, God Hand didn't sell exceptionally well, and wound up being the last game from Clover Studios before the company disbanded and the majority of staff went on to form Platinum Games. The game mixes Japanese and Western comedy with its over-the-top characters and story, with the goal of appeasing some hardcore gamers with an emphasis on comic relief. The game's director, Shinji Mikami, revealed that inspirations for the game came from another Capcom published title. Though, not because he found it inspirational in itself, but rather because he absolutely hated it. Final Fight Streetwise was the fourth entry into the Final Fight franchise, moving the franchise into 3D. Shinji Mikami claims that he hated the game's direction for the series, and that he believed that it was a horrendous entry into an otherwise well-respected franchise. After playing the title, he considered making a similar game, but not failing when it comes to the execution. The result would become God Hand, a game which, despite not being attached to any recognized IP, continues to be considered a cult classic with continued interest from fans to this day. During E3 2004, Rockstar finally revealed their next GTA title after several months of rumors and speculation. The studio showed off three screenshots exclusively depicting black characters, as well as a short blurb about the game's main character, Carl Johnson. It was initially assumed that San Andreas' protagonist would be a black man, which was later confirmed. While fans of the series were ecstatic about the new game to play, the mainstream media's attention was focused on something else. CJ's race. Many publications criticized Rockstar, proclaiming that having a black male lead in a video game which focuses on crime would only reinforce negative racial stereotypes. Articles lambasting San Andreas for its depiction of black and Hispanic characters would continue to be published all the way up to the game's release, notably before these publications could even play the game and see the context in which these characters were depicted. 
One such outlet was the New York Times, who published a highly negative article about San Andreas titled The Color of Mayhem. Naturally, the article had several quotes from people outside of the gaming industry who were outraged, with the article itself pushing the idea that San Andreas was insidious. This was for the game's quote, subtle depictions of race and ethnicity. After the game's release, however, the tide of this conversation seemed to change, with many praising Rockstar's handling of the character CJ. A large number of players noted how CJ had been equipped with a sense of morality that past GTA leads lacked, and that this actually swayed them to commit fewer crimes while playing the game. Without saying too much about the game's story, it deserves to be said that the characters you meet along the storyline of San Andreas are some of the best parts of the game. And while the game certainly isn't perfect in how it portrays people of color, many black Americans have shown their support for the game and appreciate the representation. And from one open world PS2 title to another, True Crime New York City put players in the role of a detective within the police department called the PDNY. To assist with the accuracy of the game's depiction of a police force in New York, the developers hired two New York Police Department officers, Bill Clark and Tom Walker, as consultants. Although people who worked within the police force were involved, it was largely seen as disrespectful representation by the NYPD, and actually led to the force boycotting the game. A note was also included in the game's case explaining that the NYPD does not endorse the contents of the game, which read, This game is not approved, endorsed, or connected in any way to the New York City Police Department. This game is fictional and does not represent the views, policies, or practices of the NYPD. While we said earlier that there were plenty of heavy hitters on the PS2, it also has its decent share of crappy yet interesting releases, as demonstrated with Final Fight Streetwise. Another game, however, has a bit more depth behind the resulting negative opinions of players. Portal Runner is a bizarre game, being a spin-off entry to the Army Men series of games. The game may have left many players feeling burnt, but it wasn't just those who purchased the game who were left in that state. Also, GamePro Magazine. GamePro was one of the first outlets to publish their review of the game online, giving the title a measly 2.3 out of 5, claiming it looked like a late-generation PS1 game. This did not sit well with the then-president of 3DO, the publisher and developers of the game, Trip Hawkins. In response to this review, Hawkins sent what could only be described as a threatening letter to John Rousseau, president of GamePro at the time. The email wound up being published online in its entirety, and it does not paint 3DO in a good light at all. Hawkins told Rousseau that it wasn't the readers of his magazine that were his customers, but rather the advertisers, making the implication that reviews should only be written to keep the advertisers behind the magazine happy. Hawkins wrote, The audience for games no longer consists of one iconic block of angry young men who cannot get a date on Saturday night. We wanted to include boys, girls, women, and casual gaming men. Meanwhile, I personally think we made a game that hardcore adult male gamers would enjoy, but I can understand that some of them would reject it in the same way some adults reject Shrek or Beethoven. But personally, I think that really means there is something wrong with a man like that, not with Portal Runner. Hawkins then mentions how gaming magazines are going out of business and that he didn't appreciate GamePro's negative tones, finishing off with the statement, and do not patronize me by telling me that the reader is the customer, your real customer is the one that pays you your revenue. And it's the game industry advertisers. I should mention in passing, 3DO has been one of your largest advertisers. Effective immediately, we are going to have to cut that back. In conclusion, I think you owe us one, because you took us by surprise and threw our review to a wolf. And you accepted his word as God without even checking in with a major advertiser. See folks, it isn't just the modern gaming landscape that's filled with snakes. From one franchise meant for a younger audience to another, Rocket Power was a pretty radical cartoon series from the turn of the millennium. The series had a few video game adaptations during its time, and we've previously mentioned some hidden messages found in Rocket Power Team Rocket Rescue for the first PlayStation. However, these wouldn't be the only hidden messages found in Rocket Power games. The PlayStation 2 Rocket Power title, Beach Bandits, has its own selection of unused messages that can be found in the disc's data. While some are clearly error check messages left over from development, some of the language left behind in the data for a kid's game is particularly unsavory. Within the game's executable file, it's possible to stumble across lines such as Attempt to boot cool editor failed because editor already booted. Disc is mutilated beyond repair. Duh, the fucking camera has fucked off. DVD drive is smoking crack. What the hell? Safety camera deleted. 
What makes this interesting is that while both Rocket Power games were published by THQ, the developers involved in these games were actually two completely different studios, with Team Rocket Rescue being made by Dark Black and the PS2 version of Beach Bandits being developed by Evolution Games. And now it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia, which comes from the absolute, absolute classic, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic for PC and the original Xbox. Speaking of which, if the player plugs in the first generation Duke controller into the fourth port on the original Xbox while playing the Xbox version, they'll be able to change the pitch and speed of all dialogue in the game by using the white and black action buttons. The white button will shift the voices to be higher and faster. Talk about what? The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal, if he's alive. While the black button will make them lower and slower. The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal resulting in some hilarious dialogue sequences. Did you also know that many players who purchase Resident Evil Village legitimately experience poor frame rates due to the anti-piracy features? Or that Zelda A Link Between Worlds has some extensive censorship in the West? For more facts, check out our videos on Nintendo 3DS games and anti-piracy in PC titles. That's all for today. Thank you for enjoying this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more video game facts and trivia. I've been your host, Big G Party Animal, <laughs> drinking juice and taking names. If you had to pick a juice, you can only drink one juice for the rest of your life. What's it gonna be? Let me know in the comments down below. Engage with the video, damn it.